here's how we actually separate these things. Um, pretty pretty uh, easy here. Basically, you have the two step versus the one step spin. Um, I'm not going to say one is right or or one, one is right or one is better than the other. Um, but basically, the two step has been shown to be more effective. Uh, you start with a slow speed spin and it causes, you can see here, like you kind of get the first spin 200 grams at 12 minutes. And remember, these are variable depending on the size of the centrifuge, right? So just because somebody says, hey, I'm doing it for 12 minutes, unless they have the exact same centrifuge you have, realize that it's different, you know? Um, so basically you have the first spin here. Once you do the second spin, you're going to get this beautiful PRP area here. And that's what you want. Right. And then, you know, here we separate the PRP versus the PPP, um, poor plasma. If you do the single spin, um, you know, obviously it's faster, uh, but you don't get as much effect because here you have everything kind of mixed together. So a lot of times people just do one spin and use all this as one product, which is okay. However, I would suggest that you do the second spin, you know, it doesn't take that much longer, especially on like a, a normal centrifuge, uh, normal size centrifuge. This, obviously, the smaller centrifuges take longer, um, but like basically it doesn't take that much longer. And that way you have some products that are highly effective and you have products that are less effective. And that way, you know, like, hey, for the areas I know that are damaged, I want to put the highly effective area, the highly effective products on those areas. Right. So um, hopefully that works for you. And then we do have a study, Magalon et al., showing that you have a higher, higher yield and platelet concentration five to seven times baseline by doing the double spin. So if you get a chance to do double spin, I know it takes a little longer. It's totally worth it, though. Uh, and, and it will give you the ability to do both. And that way, you know, for example, once you have the PRP, you know, hey, this is the this is the gold. Right. And you have the PPP. This is kind of like the silver, you know, uh, so, you know, which one to use for which area. A couple of parameters that you always use when you do centrifuges, right? You got the RPMs, rotations per minute, and you have the time, which is the duration of centrifuge. And so here's just some examples that, you know, are out there, you know, 300 uh, grams of force, you know, obviously depending on the radius. Uh, and so these are these are just some recommendations. Uh, and you can calculate these from the centrifuge or if you guys have the same centrifuge that I recommended from Amazon, like, <laughs> you know, and you don't have to use that one. I mean, even to the fact that I think, my first centrifuge I had was actually from Quest. Um, actually, Quest, the the lab, like the the blood company, uh, the blood testing company, actually gave me a centrifuge. It wasn't as cool as the one I got from Amazon, but it, it basically did the same thing. So, you know, sometimes if you if you order a lot of blood tests, these uh, companies will actually give you the centrifuges as well, and you can use those as long as you can change the RPMs and the time. That's all you need. And then obviously this is the calcium chloride you're going to use. This is your typical abuject syringe of calcium chloride, which you see in a crash cart. Um, this is the one that I use, uh, obviously, for the, the PRFM. Um, I'd, you can use others if you want to, um, but these are pretty pretty effective. And, you know, should you ever need them for emergency, you have them as well. So kind of cool. And here's just an example of the PRFM versus the PRF. And so, for example, for PRFM, we're going to do the first spin here. We do a second spin and we're going to get our PRFM uh, here, which is kind of like a, a fibrin, you know, gel here. Um, if I do PRF, which is that kind of yellow clot looking thing, you can see here that basically I just take the blood, put it right into a, a, a blank test tube, no anticoagulant, let it spin, get that thing spinning as fast as you can, because if you let it sit too long, it'll clot and won't work. Um, but you let it spin while it's clots, and then you'll get this kind of yellow looking, <laughs> dare I say, mucus looking thing. And this is that membrane you can cut up, you can mix it. You can use this for a lot of cool stuff. If you want to, you can cut it up and put it into different products. Uh, some people will cut these up and mix them with dermal fillers. Some people will cut these up and put them into joints. Um, if you have the ability, for example, if there's someone who has, uh, for example, like uh, a tissue atrophy from maybe a steroid injection, you can actually cut these up and you can, if you can inject them through a large gauge syringe, you can actually inject them into that area and they kind of formed that area and you can actually massage it and then have that just kind of sit there and just release growth factors all the time. Uh, which is very cool, you know, and there's a couple other things, you know, obviously you got to get the right test tubes, <laughs> you know, um, they're not very expensive. Sometimes they're hard to find because sometimes there's shortages. Remember that most of the test tubes you use will have anticoagulants. The number one uh, coagulant you're going to have is citrate. Um, and as you may be aware, citrate um, has been shown to not be a good promoter of healing. Um, however, the amount of citrate in most of these uh, when you create PRP or PRFM, it's very limited, especially in PRFM, because you actually use the calcium, which actually binds the citrate, which kind of takes it out of the mix. Um, so I uh, just realized that like there is a theoretical risk that the anticoagulants are not that beneficial. Um, however, what I've seen practically 
really no no problems you know and then you have the play the concentration you're looking for four to six times concentration over baseline uh, and that's for you know most procedures that you're going to do 